I'm Inger, he's Elmo, and this is a special edition of Brutally Honest Talk Radio. Welcome to Brutally Honest Talk Radio, where you will learn about an issue minus the BS. We don't always say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear about the issues of the day. Here's your host, Inger, along with Elmo, with his political insight and commentary. How are you doing today, Elmo? I'm doing grandiose. Oh, We're sitting on a pie or a king of the hill <laughs> of information. All right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is, That's the, this is the capital. This is the capital protest edition of Brulianis, the first uh, episode since the um, whatever you want to call the people that stormed the capital. Absolutely. And there is a lot to talk about with that. Um, Would you like to go ahead and launch right in? Well, sure. Uh, First thing I want to say is that the Capitol Police, which I'm assuming are the police that are dedicated to the Capitol building and that block or that campus were too nice to the protesters. So, you know, watching this on TV And it looks like, you know, you could see maybe 50 or 60 officers are trying to protect the building and maybe 250, 300 protesters. And it's it's fine. It's fine to protest. And we have a constitution of a peaceful assembly. When you start imposing and coming in on a property or forcing your way in, that's not in the Constitution. And my opinion is that the Capitol Police should have warned them on a megaphone or whatever and said, listen, if you try to come in here, you're going to get hurt and you might be carried out. Mm -hmm. So everybody stand down, back up right now and give us 25 feet. And, you know, I understand it was an overwhelming uh, um, number of people, but you, you got to take control. I, have a, I didn't see in video or hear about any rubber bullets being fired, which I think would have been OK to do that. You shoot them off the off the ground and let the rubber in them bounce up and hit people. I bet you they back up because they have quite a sting. <laughs> <laughs> and then the with with the smoke grenades or the uh the tear gas that was too late by the time they started throwing that. And yeah. so mm-hmm. that's 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 really my my feeling and the first thing I wanted to hit on is that they're being too nice. There's also video mm-hmm. footage inside the Capitol with them trying to push against a crowd of people and and uh, control them and subdue them should have used more force and take control of the situation. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and I've heard that the, it was the Capitol police. And as I understand it, they take care of the Capitol, just as it says, Uh instead of the federal police and the the rally had been planned and there was all types of social media talk around and that sort of thing. I don't understand why there weren't more police around there and knowing that when people go to DC and this is what DC is, you're going to march on the monuments on the, you know, on con- the Congress, all that sort of stuff. So I don't understand why there weren't more of them there. And um, secondly, I've heard that there, that the people that were doing the agitating were not necessarily Trump supporters are there for good reasons that they went there to agitate. And I can, you know, I guarantee that 99% of the people, 99.9% of the people that were there were there to peaceably protest. Like you said, that it's a part of our, um, of our constitution to peaceably protest. And that's just what they did. So um, you have the, the crazy few who get the news reports and the cameras get turned on them. They act a fool and it should not have happened. Period. I totally agree. It should not have happened. And that's not who we are. We, we do, we do not handle things this way. Yeah. Um, we're, we're going to come back to this because the, the police and how this was handled is a big part of it. 
Uh, so we can't we can't really talk about it without hitting that. Mm-hmm. But um, we're gonna. There's another aspect of it we'll, we'll hit later. The next okay. thing I want to talk about is Biden's statement. Biden gave this uh, mechanical, generic statement, um, trying to tell people uh, how, how this is wrong. But it was it was vague. And I'll just I'll just read this to you okay. and then ask, you know, ask what you think of it. Okay. This is a uh, <laughs> Washington Post. Forgive me. Biden mm-hmm. denounces racial inequalities, uh, uh, racial inequities in blasting Capitol riot. So President elect Joe Biden on Thursday denounced what he described as an unequal justice system reflected in the lenient response to the mostly white rioters who assaulted the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday, suggesting a stark contrast. <laughs> We're going to come back to that also. Okay. Uh, okay. But so um, this this wasn't about race. This this was not about race. This was about these people, an ineffectual or inaccurate way of trying to stop the the process of Biden taking office, of Biden getting elected. Tell, tell me what this means or what you think about this. So okay. uh, central goal of his presidency, Biden said, will be to restore the department's independence and reputation after four years of politi- politicization under President Trump, noting that he had chosen people with years of experience at the agency. In quotes, I want to be clear to those who lead this department who you will serve. You won't work for me. Biden said, you are not the president or the vice president's lawyer. Their loyalty is not to me. It's to the law, the Constitution, the people of this nation. And that was his response in reply to the events of the Capitol at the Capitol? Yes. Yes, that is that is in an article entitled uh, Biden, uh, part of an uh, part of the article Biden denounces racial inequities and in blasting capital riot. Okay, so let me get this straight. He denounces racial inequities at the Capitol. There's a lot of unpacking to do here. And meanwhile, for four years, I, people would venture to say eight, maybe 12, um, they have been rioting because we'll say black folks, but it's not just black folks in the crowd have been rioting because they felt there was not racial equity. So he says in response to the Capitol Hill protests, his response is not, we should not be doing this. This is not who we are. He replies race about racial inequities. How disconnected can you be? First of all, from what is actually going on and actually happening down there. So this tells us that he does not know one, his audience or two, how to address him or three, what the issue is. And next he uses a black lives matter and Tifa, whatever to try to calm a crowd that was there because they are the ones who have been called racist, xenophobes, Nazis, and everything but a child of God. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that that makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Three, he should have just kept his mouth shut. And four, probably just read from a teleprompter. And hopefully whoever he got to make that speech for him, he um, fires them on the spot because they're uh-huh. as disconnected. They're they're as dis- disconnected as he appears to be. So I, I, I don't know what the point of that statement was. And I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend too much time on, but uh, Biden, because at, at this point, which is close to the time when he's taken office to me, he's just a meat puppet. He's, right. uh, he's a mannequin is propped up there and he's, you know, he does it. He doesn't know. He doesn't know which, which way to go, which end is up. Mm-hmm. Um, now what I read to you from the Washington post, that's separate from uh, Wednesday afternoon. He made a statement that was live on television. 
and okay. he just he just he just read some some statement and then as he's walking away from the podium into the shadows and the darkness then you hear some reporters call him and ask him a question it was very low you could just hear like a woman's voice trying mm-hmm. to talk to him so mm-hmm. he stopped and turned around like it was uh the, the beginning of the dating game or whose line is it anyway <laughs> when they're standing under a shadow and you hear the kettle drums and boom you know can you guess who this is and you just see his <laughs> silhouette and he turns and lester holt is on the right side of the screen lester is much louder than biden biden is unmiked okay. but he's rambling about something and then he's holding up some man purse or some kind of you know pencil case and you, you, uh, the only thing I could understand uh, uh, Biden saying was enough is enough is enough. And like Lester was ignoring him and like Lester kept talking while Biden was talking. Like he didn't know that he was going to start talking away from the mic. And then uh, Lester like stopped what he's saying and goes, mm-hmm. and we, we hear president elect uh, saying enough is enough. And then he just wandered off stage, and that, that was it. That was it. So I, I'm not going to waste any more time on. on yeah, on just Biden. bizarre. Uh, yeah, but he, he's he's not even a part of this, really. Yeah, he, he's not a part of this. This isn't going away uh, yeah. soon. It may be the biggest story up until the inauguration, but I just I just saw real quick, like Fox News saying that this was Antifa doing this. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, some, some woman on there was commenting and it's like, okay, if you're going to start already saying that, just have some proof that some members in the crowd were, were Antifa, mm-hmm. if, if you're going to, if you're going to say that, because not like they have, you know, Antifa protesters usually are wearing Antifa t-shirts or holding up their <laughs> Antifa ID card right. and saying, I'm representing, you know, somebody was speculating on right. that. So it's like. Later for that. Right now, let's just report the news and talk about what we what we know. You right. know, that was my thing. Absolutely. Real quick. Trump made a statement about Pence, okay. and so I, I'll I'll read this to you. Trump slams his VP, saying Pence didn't have the courage to decertify results of presidential election. All right, and then to uh, to jump down to the to the actual quote, Mike Pence didn't have the courage. To do what should have been done to protect country in our constitution, giving states a chance to certify a corrected set of facts, not the fraudulent or inaccurate ones which they were asked to previously certify. Trump tweeted Wednesday, USA demands the truth. Now, what Trump is talking about is Trump Trump said and uh, some other people in government said that the vice president of the president who lost an election uh, has the has the right to uh, stop the electors or the electoral votes from being certified or that basically that there was that there's something that there's something Pence could have done to stop what was supposed to happen on Wednesday, but did happen later on, like that night. You know, mm-hmm. they convened, they came back into the building and they they pushed it through. The reason they came back into the building is because many of the many of the Congress were running out of there. Some of them were hiding under tables and there, there was chaos. So mm-hmm. they weren't able to have procedure go on mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just for people that, you know, that may have not known that or, or just say what I'm speaking to. I think, I think it was wrong for Trump to say that wrong in a couple of ways. Number one, as far as I know, and I've never heard, I've never heard uh, of a, a vice president having a power to do that. Right. Some people believe that if the president who lost an election doesn't concede, he doesn't have to leave the White House. That's not true because right. if that was the case, every president would have stayed in there, you know, for 12 years right. or whatever. Like none, none of them would have left. Right. Um, and understand that when an election is close, someone may feel like they have more ground to stand on to contest an election mm-hmm. and then the the other thing like just on behalf of pence pence that that's trump's boy he doesn't want to leave the white house either right 
Trump wanted right. to, I mean, uh, Pence wanted to stay in there. Maybe not as much as Trump because Trump's the president. But if, if there was something that Pence could have legally done to keep them right. in there, he, right. he would have done it. He would have exactly. done it. Now, you know, I'll, I'll break there. Go ahead. Yeah. I th- it, yeah. I don't think that Pence had the power constitutionally or otherwise to be able to do that. Because like you said, if that had been the case, then people would still be in there. Um, from what I understand, the and let's say I'm just speaking for the for the Georgia delegation. From what I understand, the Georgia delegation did oppose the certification of the results in the House. They did, and what they needed in order to stop the certification, it um, completely for Georgia is to have one senator to sign on to say I agree that we do not need to certify that. So of course, as everyone knows, we had Purdue and um, Leffler who were up for re-election. Leffler had promised just a few hours earlier that day that she would not allow the certification of those, um, of the results. And then, so after the Capitol Hill protests, her argument was now, well, I'm going to allow the certification of the results because of the Capitol Hill protests, blah, blah, blah. Now, there was the left Purdue. Um, and from what I have seen and read, Purdue also did not allow, or he did not make a statement as to the certification of the results, and he did not object to the certification of the results. Well, because people said, well, his term was technically over on January 3rd. Okay, so my argument is, well, why not object to the certification anyway? You're out. You have nothing to lose. So why not just go for it? This is your Hail Mary. What have you got to lose? So said all that to say my two problems with that is we had two senators that people volunteered for and fought for and put in a lot of time and money who both stood down and did not fight at all. You know, Leffler could have, you know, she was losing anyway. All she had to do was say, you know what, I, I object to it as well. Because what was done at the Capitol was done. By this time, when they came back in, everything was done. So what is there? I don't understand the lack of a spine and the lack of standing up. I just don't get it. You know, when even when you have nothing to lose, you still don't stand up. And I think that's what some of the protests were about as well. So, um, yeah. And the and coming back to the president, Pence didn't have the authority. He didn't have the constitutional authority to do that. And I think honestly, the president was just lashing out because for four years he's been called a Nazi. A, just all kinds of horrible names and they've been coming after him nonstop him and his family to include his minor son for four or five years. I think at that point he's just exhausted and he's lashing out and I'm not excusing it, but I understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a, that's a good point because what I was going to say next is, I, um, I'm not going to make excuses for him. And when I say that, I don't know why he said that. I really mean, I I don't know if he believes that or where he got that from. I'm not going to be like some people and say that he's an idiot. Well, that's the reason why. No, now you're not thinking when you say that, because there's a reason for everything. Absolutely. All right. And, and idiots don't become, uh, uh, successful billionaires with right. hundreds of employees that work for them. It just, mm-hmm. it just doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, that, that may be, that may be part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's fair to say that Trump doesn't want to leave and many, many presidents, uh, they, they don't want to be, they don't want to be defeated or they wanted to continue for, for another four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I hated to see that, and to me to say that someone doesn't have courage is the same or equal to them calling them a coward. Mm-hmm. You know, and yes. and Trump, uh, Pence has been loyal to him, and mm-hmm. they've worked together at least publicly, from what I see. We yes. don't we don't know the backroom conversations in Pence's debate with Kamala. He complimented Trump and spoke favorably about him and they they at least presented a united front. Yes. That's the way that it has come off. Yes. So, you know, God throw that out there because that's uh that's kind of a twist from the the way that they're 
uh, partnership has been for the last uh, four or five years. True. Very true. All right. Um, I just want to throw out and gotta gotta make the statement that uh, Wednesday and the protest at the Capitol showed that all Republican voters are not conservative. Okay. I okay. I would have never been there taking part in that. Mm -hmm. Real conservatives believe in law and order mm -hmm. and do not defy or resist when police tell you to stand down. And mm -hmm. also, th this is the way it, it goes, kind of kind of like with rioting and looters, like the rioters go first. There, there yeah. are other people, there are people in that crowd who would have never told the line, who would have been up there pushing through the police and forcing their way through the doors and barricades. But... They're in the crowd. They're like, hey, it's 30 degrees outside. These guys going to, you know, they're going to breach the dam. We're going behind them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, looking over heads in the crowd going, oh, did they, did they, were they successful? You know, did they get through? Did they knock the door down? Okay, we'll go in and follow behind them. You know, it, it's, it, it's a mob, you know, it's a head of the snake. Mm -hmm. It's the head of the snake. The whole snake is not thinking. The whole body is not a brain. But the, the body will follow where the, where the heads go, right. you know. But um, I, I would not have been a, a part of that. And um, I think that uh, some <laughs> definitely, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of Republican voters are divided now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I saw a person uh, in a YouTube video talking about. We own the Capitol. Th this is a conservative and a Trump supporter. So we own the Capitol. We pay taxes for that. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. We pay taxes, but we don't own the building. I don't have any shares of stock. Mm -hmm. I can't buy and sell. I can't do a timeshare and just come there whenever I want to. I can't. Uh, there's never a time when I can go to the Capitol building and or the White House, and what are you going to say that that the taxpayers own the White House too? That that doesn't give us the right to force ourselves in there. So people are, are kind of lumping some things together that don't go together. Right. And they're you know um, we we pay taxes so that people can can represent us and do what uh, what the law says to do. It's all about the law, and it, it's just it's never it's never right it's never right to do that. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and yes, we pay the tax money for it, all that sort of stuff. But like you said, that you just don't do that. We just don't. That's not how conservatives behave. And I totally agree with you that there is a split in mm -hmm. the Republican Party. Um, and people are speculating as to what comes next. You know, the people see the Republican Party right now as weak. And they see Trump, the Trump arm of the Republican Party, as strong. So, you know, there could be a split coming. I don't know. But there, the environment is certainly ripe for it. Definitely. The protesters at the Capitol building, I don't really know what their plan was after they got in there, except to disrupt and to throw a monkey wrench in the plans. And I say that I don't know what else they, they want to do after getting in there, because the protesters are pouring into the chamber and this young man, he runs and jumps in Nancy Pelosi's chair and then pulls out his cell phone. What's he doing? Playing Candy Crush or taking selfies, you know, mm -hmm. showing his boys, look, look at me. I'm king of the hill. Look, I made it. Look where I am. Mm -hmm. And you get in there and you get on you get on your phone. Like who who is the representative? Who is a spokesperson for this mob? Which I guess with a mob, you you know, it's not thinking you you, you usually one. don't have one, so they they get in there and uh, you know some guy you know it's cold up there in D.C. with that cold front coming off the Potomac. This yes. guy's wearing his, his shirt is completely open, you know he's got his his bare chest is exposed, you know I don't know if you yeah. saw this guy yeah and it, it's crazy it's crazy people. It is. Uh, you know, r running in here, doing all of this, uh, coming up in there like they own it. Exactly. And those are the people clearly just there to agitate. They're not there for, they're there for their cause. They're not there to help the American cause. You know, they're there for attention. 
period. And I think there were pictures going around on the internet of the same person at different rallies, Black Lives Matters, Antifa, yeah. I mean, just all over the place, getting his picture taken. And when you show up bare chested in winter in 40 degree weather at the Capitol to break down, yeah. then yeah, you will get attention and you will get your picture taken. So uh, with a brick wall tattoo on his arm, I guess exactly. that's his trademark, you know, you something, know. a little something to remember him by. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know. And and I'll go back to um President Trump um very quickly. Uh-huh. He's he's feeling frustrated. I think just like 71 million of his voters have been f- feeling frustrated. All they want to do was a delay of 10 days to investigate the affidavits that people have filed and everything saying that there was election fraud. They just wanted 10 days. And that got switched into, you're trying to overturn the election. No, we just need 10 days to Mm -hmm. answer the questions that have been brought about in five different states of what's been going on during the election. So I think the frustration stems from that as well. And when you say 10 days, you mean 10 days after Wednesday that just passed? Yeah, 10 10 days, I think, um, yeah, after Wednesday. From when it was going to happen Mm -hmm. or when when it was you know, scheduled to happen, they wanted 10 days after that, which is still before, would still be before the inauguration. Exactly. Exactly. That's all that people were asking for. And they were denied at every single turn. So anyone who does any kind of security in Washington, DC, they should have gotten their attention. And uh, people know how I feel about Biden. However, I don't want him to get hurt. Right. You know, right. I don't want anything mm-hmm. to happen to him. Right. And I'm sure that many of the people that you saw on Wednesday, if they could have gotten their hands on Biden, they would have they would have heard him. With this said, the inauguration is something that takes place outside, mm-hmm. which is is much more difficult to secure and protect people. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I don't I don't want. I want the stupidest thing that ha- that happens on inauguration day to be something that somebody said. I don't want it to be uh, stupid, violent behavior. Right. And they they need to make sure that they cordon off ten blocks in every direction and make sure that it it's nobody with uh you know with a scope or anything like that. And this this should definitely get their attention. Definitely, definitely. And I think the way the inauguration is going to go down this year, it's going to be some people in person, but I think it's going to be primarily virtual from what I understand. It's not going to be like it was in 2016, definitely. So um, I think because there's because of, the, the of COVID. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's jump in now to uh, to the chocolate news and the black narrative and hear what Doc Rivers had to say or uh, if I could read from that, because, mm-hmm. you know, he he was in the news and he made statements a few months ago. So we'll, we'll start with this. All right. Doc Rivers on Storm in the Capitol. Could you imagine today if those were all black people? End quote. All right. Basketball coach in in the NBA is saying this. He's speaking for a lot of black people. And what he's alluding to is the Capitol Police and the way that they handled it, that this is part of a national thing with the way that white law enforcement treats white people compared to black people or white people compared to everybody else. All right. So to, to throw out a couple of things, number one, the Capitol police are the police of the Capitol. They're in Washington, DC. They're Mm -hmm. not responsible for what any other cops do in any other city at any protest with black lives matter and anything else. Right. All right. Now I, I believe that, the Capitol Police should have been more more harsh, but mm-hmm. black people, uh, many of us, we looked at what was going on in the news on Wednesday, and because of us uh, being ignorant or being out of the entire process, all we can think of is how can we make this about race? Right. 
how can we? Which it's not right. it's not about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's the, the Capitol Police, my impression of them is that they are very different from Washington, D.C.'s finest who are patrolling and working two or three miles away from the Capitol. Mm-hmm. They're not out on the street uh, getting into skirmishes with people. And uh, when is the last time if if the Capitol Police, OK, if the Capitol Police are dedicated to the Capitol building and they're not rotating with the regular D.C. police officers, when is the last time they had any confrontation or anything like this? Right. You know, what? what is right. their experience or their experience level? Even if they've been a policeman or, or policewoman for 20 or 25 years, if they've been limited to the Capitol building, they they were not prepared for this, used to this, had anything like this. Right. You know, this is like the security at Phipps Plaza or, you know, Saks Fifth Avenue or, you know, just some place where usually everything goes really cool and smooth. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what it's about. We need to stop grouping people together. It's the same reason why people in Atlanta and Miami and Detroit protesting because what one cop did in Minneapolis. Right. Right. They're burning down their own neighborhood because of what one person did in Minneapolis. Yes. There, there, there is not. Let, let's just talk since, since that's where Derek Chauvin belongs. Let's talk about the Minneapolis Police Department, mm-hmm. which. Minneapolis hasn't been in the news since Prince died. Right. You haven't heard nothing from them except when Prince died, the police showed up there and they had good things to say about him. And they said that they were fans of Prince and that they liked him. Mm-hmm. That, that's it. That's it. So all this time has gone by and nothing has happened. So you, you don't want to burn down the whole orchard because of one bad apple. Right. And I, I know as a black person, I don't want to be grouped together with other criminals or people that exude negative behavior because they're black. And I don't think any any black people want that. So <laughs> one, one of the ways to stop that, we need to stop doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all he just did is foment more division. It, it's just, in again, in the midst of this you're making it about race, fomenting more division, causing more division, stirring things up. It's, it's, you know, it's, it then at that point, it's about him. It's not about anything else. It's about him. Now he's on record making that statement, virtue signaling for nothing, absolutely nothing. It's just, it's, uh, it's just at a point, just shut up. (laughs) <laughs> just shut up don't say anything he didn't need to weigh in on this at all there is enough agitation there's enough tension there's enough boiling over without him adding to any of it and by the way he lives more luxuriously than a lot of people in the united states do so again yeah, yeah you're telling me how oppressed you are and how um how discriminated against you are and how America is so awful yet. And still you can make six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 figures a year <laughs> bouncing a ball around. And then you go out and still foment division based on race. It's unreal. It's just unreal. The hypocrisy also, is astounding. I also want to mention Steve Harvey and Steve Harvey and rivers are not the only ones on his radio show uh, saying saying something uh, to the effect of um, we're saying, we're saying it if it had been black people scaling the wall and if it had been black people out there, they would have been treated differently. That's, that's all we're trying to tell y'all. That's all we trying to say. Okay. So of course I have questions. Okay. Knowing me. Mm -hmm. So when, when you say, this is what we're trying to say to you. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to all 92 million white people in America? Are you talking to the police? Which police are you talking to? There is no president of police like we have president of the United States. There is no one person that's over all the chief of police 
in all right. the cities saying, okay, you have your walking orders. Go ahead, brown shirts. Now I want you to march right. on D.C. And, and Richmond and Detroit and Nashville. Like there's, there's some kind of head, there, there's some kind of a grand wizard or conspiracy that is passing down instructions where we're, we're telling, they're telling people you need to treat blacks and whites differently. Right. Now, I only live in one city. This is where I spend 99% of my time. But looking at the numbers, there is nothing showing that. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, if you, if you want anything to change in any situation, you need to be specific. You need to yes. have names of people, names of organizations, names of departments. So, who who is Steve Harvey talking to right. when when he says that? Who are you talking to? Who are you complaining to? Right. Because the Capitol Police probably live in D.C. Mm-hmm. They are police that get up every day, and that's their job that they go to. But I tell you this: I bet you that most of those protesters at the Capitol are not from Washington D.C. and traveled there from right. somewhere else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially people that will be violent or that they're uh, they're they're moved or intimidated or inspired to go and bum rush a building. The mm-hmm. people that live in D.C. that drive past the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial and all of that. That's like background to them now. That's like right. leaves on trees. Mm-hmm. They they're they, they got politics and politicians all around them. You know, they, they wouldn't all of a sudden d- decide to do this. This is like like it is in a lot of situations. People that are it happened in Atlanta. Many of the yes. protesters are people that got locked up, you know, uh, mm-hmm. or not or not from that city or from that area. That is so true. And that's true of all the rioting that went on across the country. People that live in that area say uh, we're we don't they don't live here. Those people do not live here. They came, they destroyed, they went back to their homes. You know, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry to to see that and see that it happened. And when things like this happen, it's up to law enforcement to send a message. Send a message. You, first of all, you, you got to protect yourself. It's your job. If you want to keep your job, you you can't just run away. You have to stay there, whether you're wearing, you know, battle gear or whatever it is, talking about a police officer. So you want you want to do your job. You're you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're a buffer between yourself and the the uh, senators and representatives and the staff that work there. So you, you have to protect yourself. You have authority over that property. A lot of chief of police around America have resigned over the last six months because their hands are tied and cuffed and they're not able to do their job. I totally understand that. They're saying if I, if I can't be the chief and if this badge means anything and I really have authority, then <laughs> let, me, let me do my job. Yes, and trust them to do it. Trust them to do it. And, yes, and, that, so and they don't. And they don't. There, there were a lot of arrests made. Um, I haven't found out yet what the total number of people uh, is that were there. Just to just to see that you know in in proportion. And I I want to I want to ask this question to people who think that uh, these protesters were getting some kind of privilege because of their race. If you have seen and if you haven't, look it up. There's a picture in the rotunda or in the in the chamber where they convene where there are three officers who are pointing handguns at a window where somebody's trying to break that window and come through there into that room. All right. I'm sure they're giving them instructions. You need to stop. You need to stand down. You need to back up. And every every officer, everyone who handles a firearm knows that one of the rules is never point a gun at anything that you don't want to destroy. So my question to those people who, who believe 
what uh, Doc Rivers and Steve Harvey are saying. Tell me, do you think that these officers that were pointing the guns at the window, that they were waiting to see the race of the person on the other side before they were fired? And that's <laughs> that, that's just the point. That's just the nope. point that I was making. You know, can't say anything after that. <laughs> yeah, that that may be that may be what happens that we don't hear anything. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have an email address. It is brutehonestradio at gmail dot com is the best way to contact us and let us know what you think. If you if you really want to leave a comment on one of our videos or on this video. Instead of that, you can, you know, if you think that you speak for other people, whatever. So you, you have a you have a couple ways of getting a message to us. But just just think about that. You know, think 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 about what you think is going through their minds when uh, police are in that situation. Mm -hmm. Wednesday was a is a sad day in our nation's history. Um, the fact that it happened at all is a sad day. Um, and the reasons why it happened definitely makes makes us even sadder. And the, we have a lot to do as a nation to get ourselves together and um, and and get back to the principles of our founding fathers. And we have a lot of work to do. This is not a five year plan or a 10 year plan. It's a 50 year plan. It's a hundred year plan because there are many sectors of our society that have been um, infiltrated and indoctrinated with hateful rhetoric and lies and we've got to stop it so with that do you have any final thoughts for us yeah my uh my final thought today it is going to be directly related to this also and it, again it is speaking about race or people to try to make this about race the the black people who say that uh say that they should have been treated more uh more harshly or whatever or the black people are not treated the same in a protest situation if the scenario was where there were 50 percent or more black people in the crowd all right imagine this black people which in that in that situation are breaching barriers and forcing their way in a building if they if they at any situation were successful in stopping biden from being elected the same black people who are complaining were saying they need to be stopped or they need to be shot or they need to be locked up they're getting in the way of the destiny of the country because biden won the election and he needs to get in there so stop making it about race if anything, if anything stops your boy from getting sworn in on the 20th, y'all, I mean, if, if, if black people go up there, you want black people stopped because you have a higher allegiance to the Democrat Party than you do the safety of, of black people. Definitely. Definitely. And with that, thank you for listening to this episode of Brutally Honest Talk Radio. Leave a five-star review for us wherever you listen to this podcast. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and hit the notifications button so you know when we have our next episode. And with that, we will talk to you next time. Everybody have a good week, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Thank you for listening to Brutally Honest Talk Radio. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, reach out at BruteHonestRadio at gmail.com. That's B-R-U-T, HonestRadio at gmail.com.